right, you guys, we are in the second hour. We are in the second hour. Hope you guys can hear me. Donovan Sadiq. I am unapologetic. We're on the unapologetic segment of my show. We are still with RCC District Candidate Area 5, Daryl Terrell, the man, Mr. Uh, Moreno Valley himself. That's what I call him. A lot of people know him as... uh, Mr. Moreno Valley, uh, we haven't seen you at the, at the uh, council meetings. Obviously, you've been down there uh, campaigning and stuff. So, you know, what a lot of people want to know is how is the campaign going? I mean, in your opinion, for you know, how is your campaign going? My campaign is going well. Mm-hmm. It's going great. I feel very good about this this election, this mm-hmm. campaign, because you know I'm talking about issues that matter to people. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about things that people can understand. You know, not only that people in your daily lives get on the road, they go on the road of despair to... <laughs> you said the road of despair. Comes yes. Out. The 36 yeah. miles away from here, away from your family, mm-hmm. away from your kids playing sports, sorry, missing soccer games, mm-hmm. PTAs. And you sitting there thinking, you know, what can I do to help our people? What can I do? Can I, I could be a voice that could help bring them closer to home by having industries that we only could dream about, but also have remarkable skills that they can have so they can get a land a job in a place that has positions of economic mobility. Mm -hmm. So when I look at my campaign, I look at it as not saying my other campaigns were meaningful. This is so meaningful to me because I could do a lot to help people. I I could do a lot to create economic mobility that our community is lacking, and there's a lot that... I can do with the help of, of my fellow colleagues and board members working with the city, working with the county to create uh, many crap, uh, career pathways that we never thought about. Mm-hmm. And, and to make Moreno Valley College and the other colleges in the district holistic so every college can have a career, uh, they can have construction or they can have H. Uh, like fixing air conditioning units and things and plumbing. Mm-hmm. But this campaign is more enlightening and inspiring to me because I'm I'm tapping into into uh, areas that myself only could dream about because, you know, as you read stuff and you learn stuff, you learn to expand your own knowledge about things. And you, you, you can figure out that Reno Valley College could do a lot more to be a vehicle to helping people to reach their American dreams and beyond. Mm-hmm. And and I think this is the most, probably be the most fulfilling job to win, to be elected to, because I could do a lot to change people as far as to get the, the jobs that have economic mobility, have a chance to move out of an apartment, to get a house. And, and you know, I'm looking at it and people says, well, I don't see how that can happen. I mm-hmm. said, well, if you have an educated, skilled workforce with a a earn and learn approach, a hybrid training apprenticeship program that meet the needs of that industry, anything is possible. Because the fact that when a business looks around and saying, you know, I want to come here, you got cheap land, you got transportation, but you don't have an educated skilled workforce. And they say, wow, but you do have a training program that we can use and you guys are willing to leverage your resources and share the cost with us, then that's a win-win for everybody. So to me, this campaign is worth it. Mm-hmm. It's worth the drive 150 miles to Imperial Valley. It's worth it to go 36 miles um, going to three highways, three freeways to get to Norco College to see for myself what our community lacks. Mm -hmm. And so for me to be a part and seeing a professor that I just saw uh, about two days ago tell me we need people that have a stake. We need a we need we need a trustee that has history with our college, because mm-hmm. the people we get don't even care about the college. All they want is a position, and a position, that's it. And, and and they use it as a stair step to go to the next level. Yeah, mm-hmm. and and that's what I'm, Professor Morrison told me, my old college professor. And I was so honored to talk to him because I just remember 
the things he talked about, like the ribosomes and all that stuff, mm-hmm. I make I make light of that because what he was talking about has a direct effect to to the vaccine that we have today mm. because of ribosomes. Ribosomes is a key part of that vaccine. Mm. So could you imagine what we could do if we linked up with a UCR research development with renewable? Could you imagine what kind of career paths we could create, mm. educational paths, associates, degrees we could create sure. for people? And like I said, like you are just saying, having the industry, it's like the, uh, aer- the uh, aeronautics, aer- aeronautics. Mm. Mm. Um, program at mm-hmm. Reno Valley College, a trucking program. Mm-hmm. All these are possible. We have to have a more holistic approach to that. Right. And so, to me, that's you know that's your question. I mean, to me, I'm gonna win this thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I, you know, you know, you know. When, when it comes, okay, we're in the midterms where it's not a presidential election. So, <clears throat> as a political person that I am. I know a little bit about politics. I'm not an expert, but I know a little bit. I stay fairly active. I do have a degree in it. I love it. It's what I breathe. I, I, I talk about it. You guys have, have tuned in to me. Uh, nationally, I'm known as the recovering Democrat. As yes. Everybody knows. Everybody laughs at that. But that's what I'm known because, again, um, I, I was a lifelong Democrat, and then I realized... Why do I keep voting for this party that isn't doing anything for me? You know, I'm just doing mm-hmm. it out of thing. And I'm not downing anybody who's a Democrat. I'm just saying for me, I had to recover and I'm in recovery. I, I want to be a Democrat, but it's not good for me. But as we know, the way politics are, it's so polarizing now because what I've noticed is, especially in the city of Moreno Valley, most important politics is local. If you believe it or not, it's the one that affects you the most. When city council does an ordinance on us, and they can put a direct tax that hits us right in the pocket. If uh, Sacramento does a direct tax, it can hit us right in the pocket, and you know it, it's going to happen. The federal government takes a, it takes a minute before yes. it, it, it triples down. But what I noticed in Moreno Valley, and it's funny, even last night at the city council meeting, you see people, and I'm going to use Kid Cabarrus as an example. He was brought in by a certain faction off the streets. He was a relatively unknown guy that came out of Texas, was a big weed supporter, head weed head for all we know. Very young, very inexperienced, right? Yeah. Somewhere along the line, this guy switches gears, right? Had all that money from the, you know, if you're into that stuff, Edo Whites. And I'm not trying to uh, start another... My side, your side stuff. But, you know, Daryl, you were there during the WLC yes. wars as well. And then you see now for whatever, and, I, you know, I, I, and I'm you know, and i trying to stay out of it, and I, I want to stay out of it. Whatever Carreras has done has taken the very people that brought him and put him under his wing. And they feel very, very betrayed to where there's a lot of this infighting within these groups. So now you have, in our community, you have the, the, the Latinos fighting each other in regards to their sides because usually they're usually united but when you have an all hispanic council which is fine i don't have a problem with that i mean 70 what 68 percent of this town is hispanic whatever so they have the majority um you see this infighting and what's your opinion about you know the polarizing thing about politics because in your particular race i'm looking at it and it's very rare here in Moreno Valley, where you see a black man, black person, and a white person actually in a race where there is not a Latino in there. So my question to you is this. This town is Hispanic. Yes. Where do you get most of your support from? Or where would you know, where do you think that you would have to pull a lot of your support to have a successful campaign? To answer the question, I think it has to be for the, from the Hispanic community, but also um, the African American, our black community. Um, Do we have enough blacks in, in this well, town to we, actually we, win in this district? We we don't, mm-hmm. but I think building, you know, and I use this terminology, a coalition of folks, mm-hmm. what we have in common, and, and here's here's the thing. And I, part of my campaign is always economic mobility mm-hmm. because the fact we, no matter if you're black, white, or whatever, mm-hmm. we all want to strive. We all want to have a better life. But economics is the, is the key to having, to having the mobility to go strive higher, so you could so you could buy a house or to 
to have a, a higher, a greater standard of living. Mm-hmm. And I think all of us could say, we could all say, you know what, you, you're right. We need economic mobility. Mm-hmm. But that what links, you know, the people in our community together. Right. But if you don't look at it, the big picture, the big picture has always been what what we all been talking about, even during all the, the WLC wars, we want jobs, we want better lifestyles, we want uh, to buy that, whatever it is that you want to buy, but you want an economic mobility. And people sometimes miss the big picture. Because even the people that were fighting, I always say, you know what? We, we want to live a better life. We want to go beyond the middle class. Mm-hmm. We want to go higher. We want the unaffordable housing. But the thing is, people are so, like you were saying, they just, so, so much bitterness and anger mm-hmm. personally that we don't see the big picture. Mm-hmm. And, and and I always told people the big picture is what you see all around you. You get on that road every day, 36 miles, 40 mm-hmm. miles to go to work to have a better job, but you come back so dead tired. So that will make you think, say, you know what? Maybe I, I should focus on all mm-hmm. of us working together mm-hmm. and, and, to, um, and to do what we have to do. Mm-hmm. And and the thing is, you know, with that Latino community, that we all have that in common. Mm-hmm. Is economic. We all want to do better. We all want to do better. Mm-hmm. And that's a key, a key uh, factor for what unites us. Right. Right. Um, I, I don't know if you remember um, uh, what's his name. Remember that guy Holt? I forgot. Oh, Leroy Holt. Holt. Leroy Bundy Holt. You guys remember uh, when he first tried to run? Now, we hadn't seen Leroy, you know, ever in this town yeah. or whatever. You know, mm-hmm. I played football and all this other stuff. The guy was was so full of crap, right? And I immediately jumped on him. And, you know, I, I pretty much dogged his campaign. And one thing when you're running for politics, and you, Daryl, you've been here a long time. Yes. When you're running for politics, one thing you do not do is let somebody else define you. Yes. And he let me define him, Okay. Nice try, Leroy. We haven't seen him since. See, so he proved me right. You aren't a Moreno Valiant, because if you were, you would be here. Daryl, you've been here for a lot of years. Yeah. But let's face it. We have a lot of polarizing things in politics around the nation, but especially here in Moreno Valley. Um, uh, when Dr. McBean had asked me to uh, talk to Patsy Brown when she first was running in District yes. 3 to give her the advice mm-hmm. of what she needed, Patsy Brown was saying, oh, yeah, i got to get the black vote, whatever. And I told her, to hell with the black vote. If you look, there's not a lot of poor black people running around Moreno Valley. Moreno Valley is a very rich city. If it wasn't, people wouldn't be here uh, passing out white envelopes to council members to get their projects done, right? So... What what I'm trying to say is, you know, as a uh, black candidate or a white candidate, yes. in you and Carrie Finn's situation, it's obvious you have to pull some of that Hispanic vote. And we know in the Latino community, yeah. if you do not have a Latino last name, in most cases, the La Familia, you're not in the family, right? They're not going to vote for you. But in you guys' race, uh, you know, you guys are going to have to, you know, pull... That I, I think that's going to be the deciding factor in in in, in your yeah. in your race. So yeah, it is. so uh, what what is it? How are you going about getting the Latino vote? Well, I'm, I'm looking at it. I'm looking at it from a point of view we have right now in our community. Mm-hmm. We have, like you said, you the majority of our community is our is our Latino our Latino brothers, Latino mm-hmm. sisters, mm-hmm. and very 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 beautiful sisters too. By the way. Um, is is the dreamers? That's mm-hmm. that's a big issue that cross all lines. Now, wait, uh, for 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 my listeners that might know, when you say dreamers, could you kind of clarify what is a dreamer? Dreamers is one of the folks that's they these kids who come here to this country, um, and their parents brought them here for a better life, and they undocumented. Okay, and and it's no fault of their own. But they're right. Americans like everybody else. Mm-hmm. And and being in a community college setting that when I win is to do what I can to support the dreamers, to make sure that they have all the resources they can have, to make sure they have the financial aid they need, the, their um, school supplies, whatever assistance they need, that we should be a more a very supportive of, of our 
of the dreamers. Right, absolutely. Because um, again, you know, they're they're in a limbo type situation. And um, recently, I, you know, I've been looking at your signs, and they're great signs and everything like that. And of course, you know, the dreamers being a, a first generation type group that have come here. Some of them are like in their thirties. Mm-hmm. You know, you got some in their forties even. Um, but some of them have come out of the shadows, and I and, and I and I believe that that they should do. But um, I noticed that. Um, you know, your outreach to, okay, your opponent, I haven't really heard anything about her platform, really. I haven't really heard anything that she's doing in the community. Uh, you know, you've gone to the Kiss City Council meetings, and, you know, that was the last one before the election. Yeah. So how hard are you going to to be reaching out? In you know, like I said, to me, just like I told Patsy Brown uh, when I was asked to talk to her when she was running in District 3, I kept telling her, you can have all the black votes in this city you want, and you still will not win. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, it's just it's just not going to happen. You've yeah, got yeah. to somehow cater, and and uh, when I say cater, not only just cater, but uh, garner some of that Hispanic vote. And you guys are in a particular race. So, so, my, so my thing is, how, how difficult or not difficult is it to, to, uh, what's your strategy to garner his Hispanic support is basically what I'm saying. Because, well, you, because you are known, the mayor knows you, I mean, and you're known at, in the city council realm with a lot of uh, influential Hispanic leaders. Yes. So. Well, my my reach is basically, it's like, like talking to Eddie, the, the young kid that's a Moreno Valley College student. Okay. He, he he worked with me at Lowe's mm-hmm. and he, and we talked about, you know, all kinds of issues and, um, regarding our city and um politics but the thing is is when i when i do like i said when i talk to people i talk to people where they understand because i do it it to understand their their own um their own their own you know the language but also that people that i've talked to in the latino community that we they ask me about. They come to me, and I come to them, and we will talk about issues like, like I said, economic mobilities, and mm-hmm. and that drive that people understand. When you see green, that that kind of links people together. Mm-hmm. But but also too mm-hmm. that um, but also too, I is to talk to them about about the resources mm-hmm. they need to be successful because when you look at the, in the Latino community, there's a lot of resources that that they are they are lacking the community as a whole because sometimes language barriers sometimes has a lot to do with it of having um, um, information knowledge mm-hmm. because normally they wouldn't have the knowledge because sometimes if you don't know the language you don't know mm-hmm. uh, the paths to take it's like it's like mm-hmm. going to um, yeah, it's like um, mm-hmm. like going to school and um, like being at the community college. You need resources, so let's get you the resources you need so you can be successful to get your education. So, so, so let me paraphrase this. So, so, so basically, one of the the things that you're gonna you know that you're gonna promise, yeah, and you're gonna do is you're gonna make sure they get the resources that they need to be successful in the direction they want to go. Because we're not just talking about just the dream. Because most dreamers are dual language. Yeah, well, let's just face that. Yeah, and see, here's here's an example. Okay. When I went when I went down to when I walked the picking lines for the sanitation workers, uh, the the sanitation workers down in Anaheim. I, I walked the whole weekend. These were the workforce was predominantly Hispanic, mm-hmm. and we had language barriers. But we we I talked to them about their plight, and we had a lot of things in common because our plight was similar to mm-hmm. our working conditions. Mm-hmm. And to understand, I, I saw them as as I saw myself as a person who struggled because we didn't have we didn't have fair representation, we didn't mm-hmm. have uh, the resources. Mm-hmm. So I can understand from where they're coming from. But so when we talk about community college, it's the same identical thing in so many ways mm-hmm. because if you lack resources. You won't be successful. Mm-hmm. And as for me as a trustee is to ensure that those that those students get those resources they need. That's mm-hmm. just plain and simple. 
and, and you have to fight. You have to present information to them and say, "Hey, this is how we're going to do it," and make scholarships available for undocumented um, students mm -hmm. specifically. Mm -hmm. Now, now, when you say scholarships, you mean uh, particularly from the school, or are you talking about grants? Well, no, grants or scholarships. We, 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 well, we're it? we're talking about because because you, because we can get, you can state get grants. you can get you can get grants. See the folks, dreamers could get. Of grants, state grants, but they can't get federal money. Right, right. So, but the, also too, but we could do here in California, yes. some other states, so they won't let you know they're they're totally anti um, dreamers. But go ahead. but but you but we have a Riverside, we have a Riverside Community College Foundation that mm -hmm. we can raise internally the funds to support sure. the the dreamers specifically. Mm -hmm. Well, well, well. Okay, you know, and, and the dreamers is a small part of the Latin group. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The thing is, it's it's just Latin uh, the the Latino community in general. Um, you know, even though they're the majority, if you really look at the resources that are being distributed at a lot of colleges, mm -hmm. and let's just talk particularly about Moreno Valley. Yes. Um, yes, they're the majority group or whatever, and you got some people that have a problem with that. I'm not one of those people that have a problem with that. But the resources are there, but yet it is lacking that they have access to it. And well, it's not just the dreamers. We're talking about just, just, well, just you know, Latino, you know, Students in general, there's things that are going on there that they can't access. So uh, some of them come from, you know, big families. So come graduation time, they can't afford the cap and gown. They can't afford, you know, some of them want to, like we were talking a couple weeks ago about rocking the Moreno Valley gear. They can't afford, you know, certain things. Mm -hmm. And even though it's there, the resources for them to access it, it's, it's very difficult to get. Well, and, and see, when we talk about that uh, at the same time, too, because when you lack the information, if you don't have... You don't have a, a list of the different yeah. financial burdens, uh, um, burdens and, mm -hmm. and grants. Because for me, if I have a piece of paper mm -hmm. and it says on here, here's what resources available to you. Mm -hmm. and But if you if it's not stated on there, then I, I don't know where I'm going to know where the resources. Like you were saying before, how am going to know what I'm eligible for. Right, right. But we have to make it easier for people. Mm -hmm. We have to make it easier. We put it on flyers. We got to have this, the staff. To, to increase our staffing, to have people that are bilingual to tap in and say, here's the list of all the resources that are available to when it comes to grants, mm -hmm. uh, financial aid, uh, resources that they need. Yeah, I, I, I believe like at, at Valley, and I think RCC, <clears throat> RCC Moreno Valley does have it. They have a dreamer's office. Yeah, they do. So, exactly. So that, that should be able to help them in regards to that. We have an EOPS, EOPS office. That helps you with pens, paper, and stuff like that if you qualify. Um, but the reason I bring that up, because you also got Asian uh, residents mm -hmm. here um, as well. So we're going to uh, group those two uh -huh. th those two groups together to keep the, uh, the broadcast kind of short here. But um, the reason I, I say that as far as candidates is because, like I said, um, when I'm, I'm looking at these elections, I look at Hispanic candidates – and, of course, they are looking at La Familia, their own people. And they galvanize and they're very organized and they vote and they support their own. But when I see other people like yourself, Daryl, like myself, that are uh, black, African-American, whatever you want to call it, and you see, like, let's say, Caucasian people, not saying that we don't reach out to it, but like any other group, we, we depend so much on, you know, our own, which is that's human nature, Right. But you know, like I know, in this city, if you do not get a part of that Hispanic vote, you are going nowhere, period. And I don't see Carrie Thin doing that. And in your race in particular, um, you got Carrie Thin and you got you. So you guys are in a unique position. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, um, whoever can garner enough of that, that, that the, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry, the facts are the, the Latinos are the deciding factor. You can get all the blacks in this city to vote for you, Daryl. You're still not going to. Well, so for for me, mm -hmm. I look at it like this. Okay, the Latino community, you what you're saying is is factual and true. Yes. But the thing that I want the Latino community to know mm -hmm. is the fact that you will have a candidate who has wall picket lines with 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 the community mm -hmm. with you side by side. They understand the plight. Because, but also understand the way that we could get out of the way we walk together is through economic mobility. And, and again, I keep bringing that up because 
all, all people, no matter if you're black, white, brown, mm -hmm. we want a better life for our families. And a lot of the folks that came across the Rio Grande, mm -hmm. they brought their children mm -hmm. to all kinds of dangerous conditions to, for a better life. It's because they want they they had to have they wanted a better life for them. And so for me as a black man is to stand side by side with folks that have the same common um, purpose mm -hmm. to have a better life. Right. And I'm going to be the, the, the person, I'm not going to be, I will be the person that will fight for the Latino community because it's not because they're the, they're the biggest block in, in the city because it's the right thing to do because I want the Latino community, my community, mm -hmm. all of our all communities, communities. Mm -hmm. to strive for the best, and and the only way we could do that, we got to make sure we have our fair share of resources. Right. And if if it's a language barrier, then we need to do something about that. Mm -hmm. We need, if it's a dual immersion program, as yeah. you say, mm -hmm. then we need to do to expand those programs or to to develop more programs that reach into the Asian community mm -hmm. too. It's to, because the only way we strive together as one, if we understand each other's language, we understand each other's culture, mm -hmm. and but to understand that our plight. Is is their life, and I know that sometimes it's hard for people to believe. But uh, like I said, we're on the same boat. Sometimes it may not feel like it. Sometimes, but as a trustee, I will do what I humanly possible to help my my Latino brothers and, and my Latina sisters to have the resource so they can be successful mm -hmm. in, in college. So they can, if they want to go to a four-year school, go ahead. Sure. You want to transfer, go ahead. If you want to graduate, but if you want a job that has economic mobility, oh, really. then I'm going to be the person. I'm not going to be. I yeah, will be the I person, the person. Mm -hmm. that will ensure that you have those resources you need to be successful so you can provide a better a quality of life for your family. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's what something I will do and I promise to do. Right, right. Um, and, and the reason I the, the reason I bring that up is is this. Okay. The graduation rates that we have in, in our high schools here in Moreno Valley are not that great. Which means not everybody could go to college. But the good thing is you don't have to have a high school diploma to attend community college. Am I correct? Yes. How come a lot of our Latino folks don't know that because I, I ran across uh, some parents and they were like, oh, yeah, my son dropped out of school, whatever. I said, that doesn't mean anything. He can still go to point. They didn't know that. And so uh, and, and, and please, if you guys are listening, Daryl is not saying that he doesn't represent anybody. He's just going to go in there and represent Latinos. The reason why we're talking about the Latino community is because, again, they're the biggest group. And so they have the biggest voice. When you have the biggest group, you just have the biggest voice. So Daryl's talking to everybody. It's just I noticed that candidates, when they're not of a Hispanic background, they do not go out openly and court the Hispanic vote in a city that's majority Hispanic. And I noticed that, Daryl, the good, the good thing about you is a lot of the Hispanic leaders, let's say a Luis Palomares, community activist, uh, Mayor Gutierrez, uh, uh, Baca Santa Cruz, all of these people, you know, Dave Marquez, you know, all of these people, you have all these connections, which I think is, which is, I think is very, very good to have. But I just noticed when I see candidates running that are not Hispanic, they really do not make an effort to go after the Latin, the Latino vote. I don't know if that's human nature. I don't know, you know, what it is. What do you think? It's just something that's just, you well, know, it, it could be that it's taken for granted. Yeah. It's yeah. just like, Black voters in Georgia, right, you know? right. But but to um, but to you know to look at the whole situation, as I said again, mm -hmm. we have to look at what our our two cultures, including the whole, people in the whole entire city, is is looking at. Mm -hmm. and, and again, I say I keep going back to economic, economic mobility because that's what we have in common. Mm -hmm. And and we don't focus on that. That we all suffer the same faith. Right, right. I got you. And, but but that's that's mm -hmm. how I look at it. Yeah, yeah. Well, like I said, you know, you you're, you're the candidate, whatever. So um, we got seven days to go. How yeah. You, how you feeling about it? I mean, I, I feel good. Well, like I said, I feel good about it because I got the right message. It's not a message that 
I I, I took a pole because oh, I can't afford no pole because I <laughs> you know I can't I can't afford a lot of things. But the things I do know was what I see around me. But 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Money <clears throat> isn't. Well, money is everything. Let's face that. Money is everything. But you ran for uh, mayor in the last cycle and you garnered over 6,000 votes without a lot of money. Yeah. And, and out of that 6,000 votes, I believe almost half of them was the Latin community yes. supported you in doing that. that. A little bit over half of them, I think. Don't quote me on that. But 6,000 votes with, with no signs, no nothing, yeah. whatever. So... Uh, you're doing something right in, in, in regards to that. And, and what I'm going to tell people is if you supported Daryl Terrell for mayor, he's now running for trustee. The future of this nation and the future of your kids' success in school falls on this man's shoulders. And he has a track record of thinking outside the box and bringing us new ideas. If this man does not get elected and he for some fluke reason, loses this election, it is going to be the biggest travesty, one of the biggest travesties in Moreno Valley history. Because I think a person like you, yes, you, I think you, you, you would make a great mayor. I think you would make a great councilman. Like I said, everything's equi- upper mobility. But because you were a student there, you would impact the future of Moreno Valley residents, period. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, because I should look at it like this. People, like you say, are relatable. Mm-hmm. I'm a relatable right. individual. I mean, I, I just talk, I speak how I see things. Yeah, and, and you know, and the good thing is whatever factions that are out here, both sides kind of accept you and they like you. Nobody has a problem with you, you know, because you could talk to both sides. We're like, let's say, hypothetically myself. Yeah. I'm on one side or I'm on the other. You know what I mean? So I, I think that's one of your, your, your good traits is that you have a, uh, a negotiable spirit. Well, thank you. I, I just, I you know, I learned from my mentor mm-hmm. and um, and he taught me a lot. My late mentor taught me a lot about being able to listen to, to uh, people. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I may not agree with that person, but I, I learned something from that person. Mm-hmm. And and I take what they what they said I disagree with, but I also try to build on what we do agree. Mm-hmm. It's like a guy told me, I'll give you a short story. I went to the uh, uh, Register of Voters, it was a couple of years ago, mm-hmm. and the guy says, you're an anti. I said, no, I'm not an anti. You got me mixed up with somebody else. But I said, okay, let me ask you something, sir. What do, what, he asked, well, what we have in common? He said, do you like, you want better jobs? Yeah. And he said, oh, I didn't know that. I said, so I'm not against, you know, we can agree to a disagree, but we can build on, on our, on what we have in common. Right, yeah. commonality. And so mm-hmm. that's how, that's how I deal with people. Okay. Because I'm not going to be this left or this right person. Yeah. And, and I see somebody different, I'm saying, oh, they're going to, you know, I don't like them because they left. No. We, we built on. Pragmatism, right? right? Right. Practical stuff. We don't want other people think like that, but I don't. I think what can what can work. Mm-hmm. It's like sketches. I support the sketches, and there when Aldi came in, there were people who were against Aldi. Mm-hmm. I wasn't against Aldi, and and people they were saying the same argument. I said, wait a minute, these people are trying to bring in. Um, jobs. jobs into mm-hmm. the community, businesses, and they're next to a freeway. But you guys are against them. I think the message here is that we have to have more investment in our community, mm-hmm. not less. We can't make it about because you like this person, you hate this person. Mm-hmm. That that doesn't get it anymore. We have to build on what we have in common to go forward. Mm-hmm. And that, that's how I look at things because some people will say, oh, you're against this, or you got me mixed up with somebody else because... My thinking has always been, what is the, the bigger picture? Mm-hmm. It's not, is it Democrat or Republican, or is it left or right? It's what's good for the for the masses. Right. And the what, what, be, what benefits for the people? And in the sense of our community, is right now, over the 35 years, 34 years I lived in this community, and I've seen the ups and downs in this community, 
the biggest problem I've seen is people lacking a disposable income. Right. To right. bring in the uh, the the good commercial um, businesses, the high quality. Mm -hmm. And so for me to be a trustee is to look at the big picture. What's going to benefit all our community is people having access, like I said, in the Latino community, having access to specialized training or access to education, access to resources. If that means we build it, we build that, um, we get that immersion program going. Mm -hmm. and, and, that, and that means that we um, make sure that the Latino community has what they need as far as the resources to so they can be successful. Mm -hmm. And I want to be I want all of our people to be successful. But at the same time, they face a lot of barriers. Right. And so what we gotta do is try to knock those barriers down so we all could can have better lives. And so some of so the reality is that so we can get more people in back closer to home instead of being on that freeway. So that's true. That's true. Um so, so in this election cycle, let, let me just ask you this. Uh, I'm, I'm going to put you on a hot spot, and I've been putting you on a hot spot in this whole segment. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Which is, which is kind of good. Like, it's like it's people, good. people want to hear the truth and want to hear how, how you feel about it and, you know, and, and yeah. what's going on. Um, um, in, in this election here in Myrtle Valley, or let's just forget Myrtle Valley. Let, let's talk about uh, our mayor. Uh, I, you know, what, what do you think? Do you, do you think he has a very good shot to uh, unseat Jeff Hewitt? I think he has a very good shot. That, that you know, keep it short. I think he has a he has a great shot. Right. I mean, I, uh, what is your assessment of his time as mayor? I, you know, um, the mayor and I basically started off really rocky because of how he got into office and stuff like that, and all that stuff was, was shaken out. And he, to me, he kind of grew into the, uh, the the picture. And the thing is. You know, uh, I got his number, and I'm sure you got his number, too. He's a very, you know, uh, effective type guy. And he does a lot of stuff behind the scenes. He was mentored by Victoria Baca. And, uh, and me and Victoria Baca didn't have a great uh, thing as well. But, you know, as time went on, you kind of learn to respect, you know, people and kind of do do their thing because we all get caught up in this emotion. Mm -hmm. But, um you know, uh, I always tell people, you know, when it's like an exit interview, these people are servants. They're public servants. We're the bosses. And if I had to give him a grade, I would have to give him a B minus because, you know, he, he started and, you know, came in young and all this other stuff. And he's a highly educated man. And, uh, you know, did he do a lot of damage? Mm, depending on how you look at it. But, you know, I have to give him a B minus. You know, I, I just figured, you know, he... he being the first elected mayor, I, th I thought he did a pretty good job being the first elected mayor in regards to moving the city in a direction that, unfortunately, it wasn't in the direction that I wanted to go, but he moved it in the direction that he wanted to go and his supporters wanted to go. And that's how, the, how a democracy works. But if you had a grade to grade him, what, 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 what kind of grade would you give him? I would probably give him the same um, grade you gave him. Mm -hmm. And the reason I say that, I saw him. As in the beginning, immature, mm -hmm. you know, because you got to have tough skin in, in the political arena because people disagree with you. Sure. And, you know, and I think if I was his age and became mayor, I probably would, probably would have done maybe the similar thing. Probably would, do, you know, cut people off if they yeah. disagree with me. But right. he has grown into this uh, position. And, he, and, and, and like I said, with the COVID coming through, he... He handled it pretty well, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I would say, mm -hmm. and he stood. He stood up, mm -hmm. and he provided the residents the things that we need. That's, you know, the small business community, and well, and, when the kids came there with that skate park, they had their petitions. He, yeah. he presented a skate park. Yeah, and he he was a voice for the young people. And I didn't really like it because it seems to me it was done, you know, in a way. But obviously, they got it done. I can't. But it's just like how you how you see it though, because yeah. he he was a voice. He was a voice of, of the. Of the young people, and I think he has he's like I said he's grown into the position, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so that to me that says a lot about a person's maturity mm -hmm. because he he learned how to, to work the system, yeah, and, know and how work to work within and within the confines, yeah. and he and like I said when this pandemic hit, no one knew what happened, but it, he he got he put the he put people around him that were smarter than him, right? That helped guide him to make the right decisions to get us through this this pandemic mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so um so let me ask you about this um 
Baca Santa Cruz has been on the uh, has been our public servant here in District One. Uh, what kind of job do you think she's doing, in your opinion? Now, if I had to give her, and I'm kind of going to be biased, you guys, because there's some there's certain things that I know because I go to city council city council meetings, and I also go to the city staff, and I know some things are coming down the pipe that I really can't talk about, but. If you had to give me, I have to give her everything that this woman has said. If you're asking me, I, I, I'd, I'd have to give her. And I'm not trying to kiss butt. I'm not, I'm not trying to kiss butt. I have to give her A minus. I will, I will say she has been a, a, a good, a good leader, stalwart champion. Yeah, and she she's, is her mother's daughter, and she's out there serving the people. She's right. the voice of the people. She's literally doing the and, job, and she's doing what. The district needs. Well, she's gone far beyond yes. what well, I expected. Far well, beyond what I expected. And that's what I'm saying, because as long as she's still out there being our voice and getting mm-hmm. things done in the community, okay. I ain't got no complaints. Right. I'm like you. I get A minus. I mean, because she's she has lived up to what she's supposed to, the hype. to do. She lived up to the hype. I mean, you know, um, you know, sometimes I, I think of people that uh, have a parent that is, you know, it's like if you're Michael Jordan's sons, you know, the expectation, oh, Michael Jordan's son, and none of them made it to the NBA. You know, you're thinking like that. And you have a, a, a mother who, uh, Victoria Baca, um, you know, she's the first Latino to sit on the council. Latina, sorry, not said Latina. Latina to sit on the council. She, I mean, her mother did a lot of firsts. Yeah. Right? Some people don't like her. Some people do like her. You know, me and her, I... I I can't say I didn't like Victoria. I didn't like some of the things she was doing, but I like everybody in general. I'm not like a hating type person. And, you know, you have this this mother that has done all these firsts. She's The mother's highly educated. And you're following in that footstep. You know, that's a lot of pressure for her. Yeah. And, I, and I think she came through with uh, colors. So you, you give her A minus. Uh, we got three minutes left. Uh, Ed Delgado, Delgado, he's been there for over a little over a year. What do, what do you think the job he's done? I give the dude A, and the reason I say that because <laughs> the the reason I say that is because he's a stand up guy. Yeah, and talking to him and seeing his actions speaks volumes. Mm. It speaks volumes well, that I can never think of. Just well, like, a lot of people on their P's and Q's on that diet. <laughs> well, well, that's what I'm saying. It's like uh, Council Member um, Santa Cruz. It, mm-hmm. It's the same same exact thing because her actions speak louder than her yeah, words. Yeah. And she means getting, what she says. She's getting things done in, right. in District 1 where right. I live. Right. Exactly. And, De- and, and Council Member Delgado is doing a hell of a job, but right. I, I think because... He's a stand-up guy, and he's, he calls it like he sees it. Like he sees it. it. Yeah. He's not. He's not being wish. He said, "Hey, this is what it is, and mm. this is how I feel." Right. Right. It's no. It's no. You know, um, we call it a cross my fingers type of right, thing. Right. He's he's who he say he is, he is, and I and I'd say give him a. Yeah. No. Well. So uh, yeah, I'd have to give him a. Uh, I give him a two. Like I said, he's doing a good job in his district. Uh, Kit Cabreras, what do you think? Uh, he's running to for me, mayor. He, I mean, you know, uh, you know, let's uh, just be honest. I'm looking. I'm looking at. I'm looking at, mm-hmm. I'm looking at his actions, and I think it's disappointing. I ain't gonna lie to you. It mm-hmm. is disappointing. Mm-hmm. Just to see what transpired during that uh during that appointment process, yeah. because that it tells me his immaturity. He hasn't got. He hasn't moved from beyond his immaturity. Yeah. When you have somebody you're paying six figure salary to tell you things. And you don't listen to him and say, "I know more than that person." Yeah, then you, you say, that person. "I want to get, I want to get rid of that uh, yeah. city attorney." <laughs> to me, I, I'm very disappointed yeah. because all he had to do was stand on his own two feet. Right, he didn't need any help. Right, but he chose the path he did. Now he got to live with, with it. it. Right, and with, and with the censure. So, what, what what grade would you give him? I have to say, I give him a a D. I ain't failed him, but yeah. a D. <laughs> yeah. But I mean. It just, it just, I'm disappointed. Yeah. I'm really disappointed. Yeah. Because uh, I, I, I wouldn't give him a D, but I, I give him a C minus, you know, the mm-hmm. way I look at it. Because like I said, he's still got to grow and we know that that's going to take some time. But I give him a C minus because like I said, I like him as a person. It's just like, I really think his detriment is the immaturity and the, as young as he is. He, to me, a person that young should not be making decisions on a city of 210,000 people. Well, yeah. And, I, and like I said, I mean, he's a nice guy. Yeah. I'm, I'm like you. He is a nice guy. Mm-hmm. I've met him. I yeah. talked to him. But yeah. I'm like, I'm disappointed because you don't make decisions like that. Yeah. yeah no. I mean, somebody telling you something, you listen to what they say, and they'll say, I know more than him, and you don't know yeah. more than that yeah. person. And, and, and obviously, he got fed some really bad information from a, a certain person. So uh, last but not least, uh, we've got 25 seconds left. Uh, Dave Marquez. 
Uh, Well, I'll start it for this one because we got 15 seconds. Uh, I'll give him an absolute F. Straight out. Yeah, I would. I'm I'm just. I'm disappointed. That's all. All right, you guys. Donovan, Daryl, Terrell, come back and see us again next week.